Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take another look at this gun problem. The spring gun problem where we push a ball with a weight of 0.02 pounds against a spring inside the barrel. The spring constant is 36 pounds per feet. We let go and remember there's a friction force inside the barrel of 2.25 pounds pushing against the bullet as it comes through the barrel in the opposite direction. Now we were supposed to figure out where the maximum velocity is, where at what point it occurs and what that maximum velocity is. Now in the previous video we figured out a way to do that, but there's actually another way in which we can do that. Remember there's two forces at play here. We have one force, the force caused by the spring, so we can call it F sub S, pushing to the right, and then we have a friction force pushing to the left. As long as the net force is positive to the right, as long as there's more force uh, that the spring, let's put it this way, as long as the force of the spring is greater than the retarding force, the friction force, there will be an acceleration of the ball out of the barrel. But as soon as the friction force becomes bigger than the force, the force exerted, that's the word I was looking for, the, first, the force exerted by the spring, then the ball will begin to decelerate, it will be a negative acceleration. And so there's a point inside the barrel where the ball will reach its maximum velocity. The way we can picture that is through a graph. We can show that the force due to the spring is equal to k times x. Now the negative usually means that when you push, when the, when the, the spring is compressed to the left, the force of the spring is to the right. When you pull on the spring to the right, the force of the spring is to the left. But the magnitude of the force is k times x. And it's going to look something like this. And of course, we can say that the maximum force, force max by the spring, is going to be equal to the spring constant, which is 36 pounds per foot, multiplied times a half a foot. That is when the spring is fully compressed, and that means that we have a force of 18 pounds. And so if this is the force right here, this would be 18 pounds of force by the spring. Now we also have a force pushing back in the opposite direction, and let's use a different color. So here we can express the force due to the friction, and that is going to be equal to 2.25 pounds. So you can see there's going to be some point in here where the force by friction is going to be greater than the force by the spring. Of course, by the time the spring force goes to zero, that's when the ball reaches the edge of the barrel, that's when the spring is fully, fully elongated, the ball is back at its what we call the uh, equilibrium point of the spring, as that would be where x is equal to zero, and at this point this is where x is equal to one-sixth of a foot, that's when the ball is pushed into the barrel as far as, as far as it will go. So let's go ahead and find the location where that's at, that's where the two forces would be equal. At this point right here, we can say that we're going to have, at this point, x equals question mark, that's where we're going to have the maximum acceleration, or I should not the maximum acceleration, that's where acceleration will be zero, that's where we're going to have maximum velocity, so that will be v max at that location. All right, let's go ahead and set those two forces equal to one another, <clears throat> so we can say that kx is going to be equal to force friction, and so in this case we can say that k times x, and as a matter of fact, I might as well put in what those are, so we can then say k, that would be equal to 36 times x, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 2.25, or x is going to be equal to 2.25 divided by 36. Now with a calculator, we'll figure out what that is equal to. So 2.25 divided by 36, well that's equal to, x is equal to 0 0.06 to five feet, and then if we turn it into a fraction, take the inverse of that, that means that x is equal to 1 16th of a foot. So that means that this point right here, this is where x is equal to 1 16th of a foot, and that means when we reach, and let's say that this here is x equals zero, 
So at a point in the barrel, right here, where x is equal to 1 16th of a foot, that's a terrible looking 6, there we go, that is where we reach the maximum velocity. Now, what is that maximum velocity? Well, the best way to figure that out is to go ahead and use the energy conservation equation, where work plus potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to, do that, is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus energy lost due to friction. All right, no work put into the system, so that's zero. Initial potential energy would be one half kx squared. There's not going to be any motion at the very beginning. Potential energy final is going to be one half k times x final squared. That x final, of course, would be 1 16th of a foot, so let's go ahead and call it x final squared, plus the kinetic energy would be 1 half mv squared, and then we have energy lost, that would be plus the friction force times the distance. All right, we're looking for the velocity. So let's go ahead and solve that for velocity. That means, well, first of all, we can multiply everything by 2. So let's go ahead and multiply everything by 2. And so we'll put it times 2 here. We get rid of all those 1 halves, makes it a little bit easier. So then we have kx initial squared minus kx final squared. So that's the initial potential energy minus the final potential energy. Then we go, we subtract from that the friction force times d times 2. So 2 times the friction force, 2.25, times the distance traveled, which is 1 sixth of a foot minus 1 16th of a foot. So that's the total distance traveled from here to here. And we multiply times the force, and of course we got rid of the 1 half, so multiply times 2. And that will then be equal to mv squared. So finally, v will be the square root of 1 over m times all that. So V will be equal to the square root of 1 over the mass times, so we have Kx initial squared minus Kx final squared minus 2 times 2.25, which is the friction force, times 1 over 6 minus 1 16th. So next, what we need to do is we need to solve for that. So let's move over here where we have a little bit more room. And there we're going to calculate the maximum velocity. So this was the maximum velocity. <clears throat> it's going to be equal to the square root of 1 over m. So that's 1 divided by the mass, which is 0 0.02. Now it's the weight. We have to divide that by the acceleration due to gravity. In imperial units, that's 32 feet per second. But dividing, so 1 over so 0 0.02 divided by 32, that means that 32 goes to the numerator. There we go. And we multiply that times k x sub naught squared. So k is uh, 36, and that's 1 sixth squared minus 36 times the final distance squared, which is 1 16th squared, and then minus 4.5 times 1 over 6 minus 1 16th. So 1 divided by 6 minus 1 divided by 16th, which is, well, let's see here. I'm running out of room. So over here, that is 0 0.10417. All right. So that's the distance between this position and this position right there. Okay. So working all that out. So V max. That's V max is equal to. Okay, we need to put a bracket on there. It makes it look a little bit better. So we have um, 1 divided by 16, we're going to square that, equals times 36. And that's negative. And we're going to subtract from that minus 4.5 times 0 0.1041666 equals plus 1 equals times 32 equals divide by 0 0.02 and then we take the square root of that 
and we get V max is equal to 25 feet per second. All right, so now we've found the position based upon looking at the forces. So we know the exact position is going to be where the two forces are equal to each other. That's where we have no longer any acceleration. Once the retarding force, the friction force, becomes bigger than the force from the spring, then of course the ball begins to decelerate. At the very maximum point where the, at that moment the net force is zero, we reach the maximum velocity. At that moment in time the acceleration is equal to zero. The maximum velocity is 25 feet per second, and that occurs at x equals 1 16th of a foot. So there's another way in which we can solve this gun problem, and that is how it's done.